and we should be good. Here we go. Okay, cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got a phenomenal guest here today. Adam, Adam Hergenrother is here, the founder of Hergenrother Companies and real estate team leader and uh, coach, as well as, man, a construction company owner. Like you, You've got your hands in a lot of different pies. So uh, for anyone that has their, uh, their head under a rock and doesn't know who you are, we'll have uh, Adam kind of give us the rundown here in a second. But we're going to talk about kind of where the state of the industry is right now. Adam's really passionate about what's going on in technology, what's going on with the virtual brokerage movement, and all kinds of things are happening. And we're just at the tip of the, the iceberg, really, of all the changes that are going to go down in real estate, which obviously Greg and I are very fascinated by talking about. There's there's some changes that we you know made over the last six months uh, to kind of keep up with those things. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and we've got a bunch of stuff to get into. So first of all, Junior Grandmaster himself, Greg McDaniel, what's up today? Matt, what up, buddy? You know, Adam and I and you were all having a phenomenal conversation off air. It's amazing because I'd watched one of his uh, videos he done a couple of days ago, and I was fascinated about the passion that he had about, you know, different aspects of the industry. So I'm really excited to have Adam on because uh, we were all three of us are riffing, and it's amazing if you just pull your head out of the sand and you look around and you see what's going on in business today, not just in real estate, but just in business in general, where you can be making that next move in your business career. I mean, Wayne Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky the best hockey player ever, always said he skated to where the puck's going to be, not where the puck is. And that's exactly where we're going to be doing in real estate, what we have to be doing, what Adam is preaching, what Matt and I have been talking about. And I'm just excited to have this conversation and for at least 45 minutes versus our five minutes we got <laughs> prior to, to going on here. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Adam, welcome, man. I, I really enjoy, uh, enjoyed our first conversation, so I'm glad we're uh, going to have a longer one. Yeah, absolutely. I thought we were going for four and a half hours, guys. You didn't tell me we only had 45 minutes to do this because, man, this <laughs> is going to be one of these shows where people just don't want to stop because we're just – we're all we're, – you know, it, it's great analogy how you put it, just when people all of a sudden pull up their, their heads and kind of look around. I like to give the analogy where people are – you ever done like a matinee before, Matt, like a reg, like when you're in a matinee, it's like you walk in, it's really sunny out, you get inside movie theater <laughs> – there's like 150 people over there. It gets dark, right? You forget there's even other people that are in the room, right? And all of a sudden you're watching. All of a sudden you go outside and all of a sudden you're like, man, it's so light out here. Like what? Like <laughs> I think people have been so clued in to this world of looking at the movie screen. And then all of a sudden like some things have kind of – like maybe some shattering has happened. Then all of a sudden like it's, it's realizing that there is a whole other world out there that is disrupting – uh, all industries. I mean, whether you yeah. are Blockbuster to Netflix, whether you Toys R Us and Amazon. I mean, you guys have seen the statistics. I don't know them 100%, but like the first 100 years, there was like 75 companies that stayed on the top Fortune 100 and they didn't move, right? And since like the last 15 years, there's been like two that have stayed on there um, over the course of like 15 years. There's been like Apple and like, um, like, uh, um, uh, Apple, like Warren Buffett's company, right? Like there's been the traditional yeah. companies, but it is a moving industry, folks. It's a moving world right now. And the people that uh, are unwilling to wake up to this are going to get blockbustered. I love to use that term right now since this is so true. Hey, there's one left. I never thought anything was going to happen to him. I was going to say, yeah. I, I bet that one blockbuster office in there Portland is. is doing phenomenal business. Um <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, so Adam, let's let's tie a few things together. So we've got we've got a combination of yeah. of you know team leaders, broker owners, you know, and and then a, obviously a lot of rank and file agents that are out there. This is their livelihood. This is their part time lifestyle business, or this is their full time support their family business, whatever the case may be. Um, first of all, kind of fill people in on where the perspective that you're coming from, because obviously you're operating at a very high level, and so you're thinking out five, ten, fifteen years from now. A lot of these things will come faster than that, but give people kind of an, a sense of what, what your life is like, the team that you have, so they understand your perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, I started as an agent in 2007 in the, in the kind of the market crash, right, where it happened and kind of put my blinders on everything that was going around there and just got the work. Um, and then throughout that time, I, you know, I built a team right away in small little Vermont where we actually have – and this isn't even like a joke. We have more cows than human beings in this state. So um, we are in this kind of small, small state of, of people, but we end up, up building this team. And then um, I launched uh, Keller Williams Market Center in, in 2010 after listening and having a conversation with Gary about that. And so, um, and I have multiple business centers throughout the state uh, of Vermont. And, you know, we have Hergenrother Realty Group, which is our expansion platform that started in 2011. 
we're in 19 different states. We have about uh, 220 agents or so in those locations. Um, and then that's not including market centers or anything like that. And then uh, I also own a company called BlackRock Construction. Uh, we've been on Inc.'s 5,000. Last year, we were number 42 out of the 5,000 group uh, for that. And we build healthcare campuses. Uh, we, we do about $25 million, um, or so for that organization we're building throughout New England and, and kind of changing the world with some technology that we're bringing to healthcare campuses. But we'll save that conversation for another one. Uh, and then we also have a uh, coaching component, um, Adam Hergen over training, which has an affiliate partnership with Max, which I highly recommend, and, and, and they have some cool stuff in there. And then we also do some of our stuff on our, on our side as well, too, for, for that. So I'm looking at this not just from an angle of an agent or a market center owner or a coach or a developer, right? I have literally the, the entire gamut of all real estate services, if you will, safe kind of property management um, as to where this industry is going. So for the last three years, guys, just like you've been doing, like we've just been interviewing with the CEOs and owners of these massive companies are doing it. What's your vision? Where do you see? What is this? Because the minute you think you're the smartest person in the room, congratulations, you are the dumbest, right? So it's just <laughs> it's really trying to understand where people's heads at. And that's what really kind of shook me up. I was a couple years ago, I was like, dude, they're really gonna do that. And like and I'm like, there's no way. And then all of a sudden like it kinda hit me, I'm like, this is happening. Right. And, you yeah. know, um, you know, e EXP saw this happening. Um, Compass sees this happening. You know, it, Open Door sees this happening. It's interesting what you're seeing. If I had a flow chart, I like can draw out where there's a most tr traditional real estate firms, any firm in the industry went from kind of like the core company, like the international company to a region, right, to a franchise owner, franchise owner to an agent, agent to consumer. So there is a complexity of different bandwidths of people controlling different aspects of everything and how the money flows, right? Well, mm -hmm. then we saw Zillow really come in the picture and what they do. They went from the international directly to who? The consumer, yeah. right? So then that kind of woke us up and go, well, if somebody does that, then everybody inside this world is in trouble, right? So and then you're seeing um, like Open Door or Next or things like that going directly from agent to consumer. Then you're seeing companies like EXP, right, that are going directly from – international to agent, agent to consumer, right? And you're still seeing traditional companies, not runs right or wrong. I'm just, this is just the facts of what's happening. We're seeing traditional companies still in the, the model. So I'm, I'm really happy to see, um, you know, the industry shifting into where it's going anyways and allowing the organizations that are evolving to have and create win-wins on from all the different partners that we can throughout the organizations. Um, so that's where my head's at right now. I'm super passionate about what, what's happening right now because here, look at this, Matt and Glenn, think about this. How often are you involved with shaping an industry that these changes are going to last a century, right? A hundred years, 50 years. It hasn't happened. I mean, people don't realize that we are in the midst of changing this. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. No, yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. It's just like what we talked about before you keep using the word blockbuster because we go back to the, you know, when blockbuster got destroyed, you know, a lot of the, you know, hard retailers getting destroyed. The big, the big malls are getting destroyed. Uh, Amazon's just eating them alive because it's all digital. I mean, I was, <clears throat> I mean, I was uh, in the store yesterday. I was looking I was looking around and I almost walked down the aisle. And this is the weird part. I think this is going to happen in real estate too. I almost walked down the aisle to get like grout cleaner or something like that. So I just wanted to clean my bathroom. Yeah. And, and, I, and I immediately thought, I'm like, nah, it'd just be easier to go home and order it from Amazon, which I was in, in the aisle to, <laughs> or, to get it. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's not, a, there, we have, do have to account for an element of laziness there. I'm just saying. Oh, like, shush your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but but I think the mindset uh, is shifting. But I think everything is going to be yeah. going digital. Everything is going to be at the at our fingertips. I was with my friend Jackie the other day. We went. I'm not a big wine guy. I'll admit that. I'm a beer guy and, and spirits guy. Uh, and we walked into this wine store, and I went snow blind because there was so much to pick from. Right? That's kind of like walking into a brokerage and not knowing which agent to pick from. And she made the comment because she was a big wine girl, and she's like, "Well, it's much easier just to go online, select by region, and then just go pick it up." instead of actually have to walk through it and actually select. And I think that the way the old school, the real estate the agents have always been done, is like, here's like every agent in the marketplace, go ahead and pick one, they're all the same. When in reality, we can go, now we can look at reviews, we can, we can see what our friends think about it, we can just type in names and look at profiles. I think that as, as we go down the path, I think like we talked about pre-show, if agents don't pull their heads out of the sand, 
they are going to get run over by a bus. They're going to get, they're going to feel the bump, bump of the back axle running over them. They're going to look up after the bus has passed them and be like, what happened to my business? Where did everything go? But yet, I mean, Adam, what are you seeing with the real estate agents right now in regards to their ability to understand this concept? Are they just straight up head and stand still or are they, are they starting to wake up? You know, I think for the, I think people have thought that the real estate industry has changed or shifted. And I think it's becoming like a lot. What I try to tell everybody is like, guys, it hasn't changed at all yet. It's about to change, but we really haven't seen any significant from an industry standpoint, right? We haven't seen really much significant change from the consumer experience side of different things right now. Sure, some virtual stuff is going to help, but I think people just are starting to wake up and realize that, guys, we are not going to recognize real estate in 24 months. It is going to look completely different. It doesn't mean that's a bad thing. It's actually a good opportunity for business owners and for people who are thinking to be innovative and understand that we've got to change to be able to do this. So we're starting to see people wake up and realize like, hey, does it make sense for me to be on an expansion team, right? Does it make sense for me to be part of an organization? Because I think people need to realize one thing with expansion, and we're just calling it expansion, it's really just a big, it's, I like to think of it, as I said in my video, as a team, a geographic organization without borders, right? It's just, it's, it's mm -hmm. what it is, right? Um, and so that you can do it, it just happens to be, in my world, it just happens to be underneath another company, and same thing in your world, it just happens to be underneath another company that allows you guys to go out and freedom to be able to do those things. Um, and agents are waking up and going, you're right, you're right, Greg, because I'm not going to be able to compete with Matt and Greg who will have 15,000 reviews when they come in there and all this technology, all the support, the barriers to entry to being a new agent are going to increase. And right now, the barriers to entry are almost zero. Like anybody can come in and become an agent. Well, you're going to see that start to go away. Like I look at BlackRock, like I'm in the, in the development world and, you know, we've got 10 to $12 million in um, projects currently just operating. We have 800 units that I either own or under construction or in permitting right now throughout New England. And I look at that and I and people can't walk leave my company and go do that, right? That takes millions of dollars of capital, bank relationships, financing, people and deals. The barriers to entry are very, very difficult to get into. It's been in real estate very easy for anybody to enter into this space. Well with technology changing and you're starting to see more of, you know, Use the example for grocery stores. I mean, how easy is it for now for a grocery store to go compete with Amazon? Whereas 25 years ago, you could have gone out there and created a, your own independent shop, and you could have competed with your local people, right? It became yep. easier to do that. What's happening with with where where the world and the industry is going with technology and things? It's going to be harder to compete as an individual agent or especially as a newer agent to come into these things as these teams get larger uh, inside organizations, outside organizations. I actually, I'm, I believe that we're going to see about, if there's 1.2 million uh, realtors, right? I think you're going to see that down to about 700,000, but I think you're going to see those 700,000 much more productive, meaning that um, when teams come into play, teams are focused on execution. I can't have an agent just come into an office like traditional real estate firms can and have them kind of serve as a house, meaning that like if I have a team, I can't have an agent go and do four or five deals. That's great if they want to do that. I'm not saying it's not right or wrong, but on a team, when I'm pouring into you leadership, growth, money, investments, I can't have you do four or five deals and get a return. So what you're, what, what's forcing the industry is forcing us is to have these teams that are so concentrated on lead conversion, client experiences, better experience in terms of for because uh, the, the reality is that the experience for a client right now is not that great, right? And mm -hmm. it's just been antiquated for a long period of time. We need to change that as, a, as you, me, all of us, and that's going to make the industry better. And so when we start making these changes, it's going to help everybody realize that the technology, AI, um, the command, uh, Kelly, all these different components that are happening out there, um, are going to shift everything. And so when you have a team, you're focusing on execution, right? You're focusing on getting somebody to do, you know, to help and serve 25 to 30 families at minimum per year on your team so that agents getting a healthy lifestyle and people are much more productive. Um, I also feel that, and I've, I've shared this a little bit, I feel like there's going to be some downward pressure on commission. I, I just think yeah, that yep. in, a, in five years, you're going to wake up and I think people are going to pay one fee and it's going to be insurance, it's going to be an agent to help you, right? It's going to be title. 
It's going to be your mortgage insurance. There's going to be it's going to be lumped into it that these large companies are going to come together and start packaging, mm-hmm. just like Amazon has done with all these other components and those things. So a consumer wakes up and they press one button for convenience. I mean, people will go and use Uber to save a minute and a half. I don't want to take my <laughs> now. I'm like I'm lazy enough. I don't want to take my wallet out anymore to pay somebody cash where it should just be automatically taken from my phone. I get pissed off when I have to do that now, right? <laughs> so we just we're training ourselves. <laughs> Yeah. To to think that way, so I'm gonna stop because no, 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 no. Keep really, going. It's really I, good. I, I, yeah. I love yeah. where you're going with this. Yeah. You know, the future. What the future team is gonna look like? And Matt, you Matt, who did we? I forget who we interviewed, but we interviewed someone. We were talking about the future of real estate. And Adam, we're right on board with you because I think the future of real estate, when Amazon, when Facebook, when you know Google, when all of these major conglomerates say, well, why are we not dipping our fingers into this big pie? There's billions of dollars here. Why are we leaving it up to Tom, Dick, and Harry over here who barely have any kind of education, you know, barely do a good job? Why don't we just do a better job at a lower rate? Everyone want to come to us. They already trust us. We're, my theory is, and see, Adam, where, where your thought is on this, um, is I think that the commissions are going to be coming down. I actually talked to uh, my team manager about doing a, a lower price commission structures and doing some wordsmithing for for our marketing. But I think that in the future, people are going to be paying a low percentage or a flat fee, maybe 500, 1,000, couple thousand, one percent, whatever that number is going to be for the listing side. But the real money is going to be on the buy side because that's still the interpersonal relationships. You know, AI cannot still stand there and be like, well, you know, there's a crack here. This might be a foundation issue. The neighborhood, this guy smokes weed, you know, consistently around the neighborhood, and you know, there's a drug on the on the front yard. AI is not going to be like, well, this is the beautiful here are the stats. They can't do the interpersonal side. But I think that might be going down the side of just being more buyer centric versus listing centric and that's where i my speculation again i would love to hear your thoughts on is that's where the 700,000 agents come from the 1.2 million down to the people who are willing to go out there and hustle and grind and have a better review structure and can understand the ai and work with it versus be afraid of it and not be not doing video not using the technology around us not being using the social media platforms at the at, at the proper levels there's just a huge and i want that shift i really want that shift because the like you said the consumer's going to have a better experience there was a stat that i read last year that <clears throat> When they asked people who sold their homes or bought the home, hey, what was your experience? The overwhelming percentage was it was absolutely horrible, and they said they would rather spend a weekend in jail than do another real estate transaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, which is, which is why uh, Zillow came along. You know, and that, it's interesting, Adam, yeah. that you brought that up because they, they did what the real estate industry should have done ourselves, which is put the consumer first and figure out how to cut out yeah. some of those layers and make it a better experience. Yeah. So to me, that's what's really driving this is that all this stuff that you're talking about that's going on in other industries, it's raising the bar in terms of what consumers feel like is their experience. And then they go to do a real estate transaction and like, what the heck is this going on from the early 1900s that I'm somehow caught up in? The I, like, <laughs> I can I can go back and watch over Thrones. here. Like what? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on my phone. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's. I mean, you, it's. It's. It, we're right on. I mean, that's. That's exactly right. I. I mean, I. I, I agree with you, Greg. I. You know, I haven't thought about it from that perspective from the buyer to listing side. I just. And I do believe that there, those are prices are going to be adjusted. I mean, anytime there's capitalism in something, prices get competitive, right? I mm-hmm. mean, that's just. It just happens the way the. It's the way that works. I mean, Amazon went 10 years to co- undercut everybody just to make profits later on, and and that's why when I and I think if you have 700,000 agents, I believe that you may have there may be a thousand teams that have all those agents underneath them. Like hmm. I think they're all companies. Yeah, uh, I, I, I firm, I, 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 could, I, I mean, who knows, but I, I believe just because I for tax there reasons. is scope. Because that, yes, cause that know, would, right? be, would but, be really easy to make a sweeping declaration that they're all employees, which would, which that's another thing that, that we're keeping an eye on. That would be very bad. Yeah, so I almost like, I, I yeah. like it from the team perspective because for the team, it would be very good for the team, but it might be very bad for the teams as well. If they can just sweepingly declare that great, now that it's all just a bunch of people on teams, we're going to make them all employees. Yeah, you know, just go ahead and save their 15%, yeah. fucking all that stuff. Yeah. That, yeah, that would not be Let's have Uber problem. keep fighting that battle for us. Um, so yes, they can keep exactly. spending that money and hopefully they, they keep winning like they've, they've, they've done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be, it's, man, it's going to be a shift. It's going to be interesting. And I'm, like, as both of you guys, I'm excited about it because this is going to bring the much needed change to an antiquated industry. Frankly, mm-hmm. I mean, it was one of the harder ones to get into. It was. Like, they went to the lowest hanging fruit that they could go into in service first. Even think about this think about cars, right? I mean, people never thought they would be buying cars online sight unseen. Think about how many people are buying cars now sight unseen, having it delivered from that system. 
Yeah. I, I mean, it's – and these are – I mean, it's it's happening, folks, and, and uh, hopefully people – like the message that you guys are getting out about this is awesome because if, if we can all come together as an industry – here's the other thing is that we all actually need to come together as an industry because if we don't, if we don't come together and start pushing this forward with innovation, sure, may we compete in some different arenas, but let's make sure we have an arena to actually compete in together because if <laughs> we don't and we get another company that is coming in there that says – I don't know what you guys are doing over here and you guys just like just dancing over here with each other. We're going to come in and swoop behind you and just go directly to this and, and take all of that. And you guys, thanks. Right. Like, so the, the conversation needs to happen so that we can have an arena. Yeah, and that, that's true. We all, we all live in a delusion that if we stay exactly the way we are right now, that everything will just stay, just stay par for the game, par for the course, but it won't. I mean, there are, there are sharks out there swimming around our industry right now and they, they see what's going on. They get it. I mean, Trulia just made a just made a, was it Redfin just made uh, an, a, an announcement that they're going to be doing one percent listings. Um, you know, Zillow bought a, a mortgage company, which check this out their their profitability pr perspective for 2018 went from 190 million dollars in profit down to 30 million dollars in profit because there's such a, a risk adver risk in buying this mortgage company. Their stock trade went from buy to a neutral. That's going to be a temporary thing because we're we're just getting our feet wet and how this business is going to look in in the future twenty four thirty six you know ninety months wherever it's going to be down the road but it's going to radically shift. My dad, you know, the grandmaster, you know, he's he's he looked at me about six months ago. He's like, Greg, this business is going to be a hundred percent different in three years or less. And I I didn't really see it at that point. I looked back. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then as I kind of dive into it more and more, having high level conversations with like people like you, Adam, and just who are get it, who are out there moving, moving and shaking. It's like the people who who are actually you know doing business, not the people who do one to two deals a year. No, no, no. Yeah. They're nice. They're beautiful. They're wonderful human beings. Yeah. But they're not the people that are paying attention to the trends and forecasting exactly. because of what they've seen in the past. And it's, I mean, with the radio show that I do on KGO, I'm forced to do more big view, like like national views, international views, and it's it's tremendously scary. I mean, our, our the home buyership is down from our peak in 2009. I think it was like 69.7 percent of home ownership. It's like at 43 percent percent ownership right now. I mean, people are pulling back on the buy side, so the consumers are reacting to this as well because they're getting ticked off at the high fees when they can go to any other organization. I can go to Amazon, click one thing, pay basically no shipping, and I can get what I want. Why am I going to pay you sixty thousand dollars to sell my two million dollar home when I can yeah. go to someone else and pay you ten grand? Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, and, and part of it is is that. Um, I <laughs> You know, I always share this a little with people, and it kind of made get me in trouble a little bit. But uh, you know, it's, <laughs> when you think about it, um, the reason why consumers pay the commissions that they do because it's almost free money to them. And what yeah. I mean by that is that if somebody had to write a checkout for the commission out of their personal pocket, there would have been a change in our industry a long time ago. Yeah, it's because they see it, they've kind of factored in there, there's equity in there, so it's almost like money that they are getting back, and they're not seeing that portion of it. Whereas if you hire an attorney, they're going to be like, Matt, it's going to be $13,000 for our four-hour consultation. You go, hey, this, this is not going to happen, right? So that's why I think <laughs> you're going to see part of that part of shift. You know, and, and what you're also – what I, part of this is, is like you're right, home ownership I think is going, which is why I'm pushing so hard for the – our apartment buildings, and I've, I've, I've gone all in on that. Like, I'm going to give you an example of something I'm building right now. It's actually, we're, we're trademarking it. It's called Freedom Living, and we're bringing mm. these things out to particular locations throughout the United States right now. We've partnered with a couple of REIT companies. Um, and and what, what, this is, what this is looking like, it's like a uh, we partner next to spa locations, so they have the amenities that are there. We, and we build an all-inclusive, basically they're anywhere between like 30 and 50 units, we staff them a concierge person, but not opening your door. Concierge person to like, hey, Greg, you need some uh, caulking for that thing? Let me order it for you. I have your Amazon account. Boom, I'm going to take care of that for you. You want to eat in on Thursday night? Let me take care of that for you. Yeah. It's on-demand services for living. So if they're all rental units and there's a little premium for it, but people are willing to pay for premium right now for time. And you're yep. seeing that more and more in our history. People are, it's like, why do people, for the experience and time, people could go to Dunkin' Donuts, pay 59 cents for a cup of coffee that does the exact same thing, or they can go into Starbucks and buy a Mocha Loca Hoka for 1879, right? And they're <laughs> buying it because of the experience, the things they're getting, right? And the, the commitment, the time, all those things. So people are willing to spend the money. And we're seeing that right now with, with we have re-companies trying to buy into our building right now that we're putting up 
for this particular case. And it, it's just, it, it's, all, it's all real estate industry, right? So you're seeing this kind of on-demand services, speed, time. That's what technology is going to do, and that's where we're going as an industry. Dude, yeah. I've had this idea for a long time. I've, I've watched these crumbling you know, shopping centers. I'm like, why don't we just take these crumbling shopping centers? They have all the infrastructure ever needed. They have all the parking ever needed. Strip out all the stores. All the stores, for the most part, then become condo condos. Then you put your Starbucks, your workout thing, your, your own movie theater. You make it their own ecosystem, which people don't ever have to leave because they have their business centers. They have everything they'll ever need right there. And you don't buy them. You rent them. But more of like a, a, a timeshare. So you could, let's say I wanted to go to Vermont. Well, I just go, to Adam, hey, you got a unit open? Cool, brother. I'm going to book that for X, Y, and Z time frame. No, I want to come back to California. I want to go to Texas. I want to go to you know, Detroit. I want to go anywhere I want, but I can hop, skip around. I think the freedom thing, I really think you're onto something there. And it's something I've pondered for a number of years. I'm glad to see someone like you are taking action on this thing. The Gen Zs, the millennials, I mean, these are the types of people that they don't really care. I mean, they'll make enough money to survive. But then they're like, dude, I made uh, 10 grand, right? Now I'm going to go travel for four months. I'm out and I'll come back and I'm not tied down. I mean, Matt, that's why you said it several times on the show. That's why you don't own a home because you want what? Freedom, right? I pay a premium for freedom. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that, that is a difference. Like you and I, Greg, are only three years apart. And even you're mystified sometimes by my my approach to things, and because I'm because I'm technically a millennial and you're you're not that, but that there is that <laughs> there is that gap there. Uh, and Adam, you're talking about that kind of freedom of living. It's almost like a you know uh, like a we work approach to working. We're about to have a we live approach to the to the way that uh, yeah. that yeah the, the the way that we live and the way that we what we're willing to pay for is changing. You know, uh, and, and that's, I, I think that's why we're seeing like the home ownership trends change. What I like about this and what I like about your yeah. approach is that, and this is always the X factor in all of this, right, which is what do the consumers want? That's the hardest part of all of this to track because you mentioned that we need to get together as an industry and, and start figuring this out and start talking to each other. That's what we didn't do, which allowed companies like Zillow to come up is because we didn't do this. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you see that looking like? If, if you had your perfect world, and the real estate industry was doing what what you would like it to do. What does that look like? Yeah, and, and, and I, I like where you guys are going with that that question too. But um, the other thing is, I think this is even. I mean, this is just going to throw a sidebar out there because I, I love it. I actually think this is going to happen in school too. I think Greg, what you just said, mm -hmm. now what you're saying right there, I think people are going to start living globally and they're going to start mm -hmm. swapping schools people as families like in fourth grade you're going to take your family and move partly because i want to do that i have six four and two and i want to take my kids and i want to go live somewhere for a year and come yeah. back for six months then go live yeah. over here for six months and, yeah. that, and there's going to be this whole i mean study abroad came in right in 2004 when i graduated college i started doing that it was like one of the first years that really started happening we're going to see that in generic grade school because dude you guys know the experiences you get traveling yeah. like that are much greater beyond. You learn how to, oh, money just doesn't grow in trees. You have to actually pay for things. Like you have yeah. to learn how to do stuff. You have to learn how to get new bank accounts, right? All of these things. I think it's going to be so important for us um, as an, it's just the world is where, where they're going. I see Agreed. the real estate industry um, as, we, as we continue to grow is providing the ultimate consumer experience. So what we're doing is we're using technology to enable the agent to provide the best experience. And that's mm. ultimately, if we can combine, if we can figure that piece out versus the other side where technology dangles the agent, which meaning technology is driving everything, but just the agent's kind of down here, not as important. If we can keep together as an industry that the agent is the, the glue, like you said, Greg, earlier, like they can't say whether or not some guy is, you know, streaks down here every Saturday night, right? Or whatever it is <laughs> they're doing. We, we as an industry, if we can figure out how to keep the agent in the forefront using technology and everything that we have in this industry and the world that's happening, using that as a catalyst to support our industry, our agents, and equip them with that, with agents who actually want to go out there and build careers in this world to help and serve families in providing that experience, that's what it needs to look like. You, I 100% agree. I think with AI and a lot of you know augmented reality and a lot of these other things that are just at the yeah, just at the baby infant infant stages with our with our business. Baby. I mean, you could be in Brazil with your kiddos, right? On a on a couple of month you know, hiatus, or, but you're still working. We could still literally be showing homes sitting on the beach in Brazil 
because you're doing your you're doing everything. You're sending them over like, okay, Matt and Julie, your three obese little wood dented insulin insulin sucking little babies. Boom, there are four homes. What do you think? Matt looks at them. Bam, you get a showing agent that's boots on ground. They open their lockbox monkey. They open the door. They come back to you. Bing, bang, boom. You write the offer up. You're you're sipping on your second mai tai. You know. That, but that's the way it's going. Exactly. You know. Yeah. It, it, it we're, is. We've it been is. geographically locked. That's been my biggest problem with real estate for the last 19 years. I've been geographically locked to a location. Not by my choosing. My parents moved me here. No, I love the Bay Area. I I don't think I'd ever move. I mean, I could be in worse places in the world. Um, but I mean, what I'm saying is, is that the, the, like you said, Adam, freedom, giving people freedom to choose. Like if I wanted to go to Australia for six months and then come back for six months and then go to Thailand for five months and then come back and then go to Buenos Aires and come back, you know, see the world. I mean, there, there's a lot yeah. of documentaries out there that, that, that show the parents that took young children, your ages, Adam, like your kiddos ages, took them and traveled the world with them. Those kids came back so much more rounded. They don't look at it and be like, oh, well, I've heard of this place called Africa. And these other kids can be like, no, dude, like, seriously, my best friend was an elephant. It was amazing. You know, <laughs> we called him Dumbo. <laughs> I, I pulled an elephant's tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, but, yeah. It, it is. It is. And it, yeah. You know what we, the three of us need to create is figure out the next avenue is how do you make air travel cost effective? That's going to be the it. next component. And people. Yeah, yeah that, like that's it. how we do it. Like Matt it. pays for it. <laughs> no, that's the that's the way. We figure right. that out. That's the next industry piece, right? How do you Uber planes, right? How do you start getting that whole yes. piece together? Once we nail this as a society, man, the world becomes it's already global, but it becomes massively global in in a, yeah. in a place where everyone's just traveling all over the place with different things. And you said the experience. I studied abroad, and I still to this day that was the best experience that I had for the eight months that I was down in Australia when I lived there than anything else. I was the first time I had to like, figure things out for myself. I mean, it's like I tell everybody you should do that. So I'm like, I need to bring my kids doing these type of things. So, so yeah, 100%. We're on. Yeah, that's awesome. Where, where did you go in Australia, by the way? Where did you yeah. spend the time? I lived in Brisbane. Yeah, that's, that's where we spoke Brisbane, in March. Yeah. That's awesome. Love Brisbane. Brisbane's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's a great town. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so g getting back to um, – to where you see where are things most likely just we mentioned that there's there's some radical changes and, and it's all it's really fun to speculate in the next couple of years we know some things that are kind of sort of on the horizon that might take off so let's say the highest percentage things like let's say open door redfin like a company comes in like redfin that, that is venture capital back they don't have to make a profit they can afford to give away the commissions so that, that's one of the things that I feel like is most likely to happen. What are some of the things that you think are pretty high percentage things to change in the next couple of years? Well, virtual brokerage, right? I mean, EXP is, is, is doing that. Greg, you're very aware of that. You mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. Taylor Williams, as you guys just noticed, just announced because we've been fighting for that for a while about virtual brokerages. Virtual mm -hmm. brokerage, every real estate company needs to wake up to virtual brokerage because mm -hmm. that's going to give the freedom to agents. It's going to give them the tools necessary to be able to do these things. So that is inevitable. That's happening. It, it, that's in current time. It's just as it's still an infancy stage. It's going to be because we're still figuring out what that looks like. I think that your virtual brokerage combined with a physical clubhouse. Um, that's where my, it's why Amazon bought Whole Foods because they realize that they can't just have pure technology, that there is this experience people do want yep. when they want to be able to do it, not to be a slave to it, which like it was before. It's not a chore anymore. People like to go to those things, which is why they bought Whole Foods. Then, by the way, their stock went up to actually compensate them in that same 24-hour period they bought them to pay for the entire acquisition of Whole Foods. Wouldn't that be <laughs> awesome as an organization when you buy a $20 billion company that your stock price rises by $21 billion the same day you bought a company i mean that's yeah. that's incredible um billion that dollars by, like that. by buying 20 billion you make a billion yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah. evil I, evil strategy i, I love it <laughs> love it yeah <laughs> but, and, you know, and i think you're gonna and i think you're gonna see where that dabbles right you're gonna see the physical space combined with the digital space enhancing the agent so i think you're gonna have that clubhouse type feel which is how um you know whether it's an individual team's office that does that whether it's a you know a brokerage market center that changes to support because the value that they're going to be providing is going to change uh directions but it's a it's a key concept to having uh and pushing this entire evolution forward so that's one thing that I definitely see happening yeah you know that makes sense and that allows people that want the community that want the feeling of that physical tribe to get it but everybody else doesn't have to pay for it they, just the people who really want it and value it as part of their business get to have it if they want it. 
But it, but it is a part. You know, Greg, you said. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say I'm, I'm going to agree. I, it is important to be around other agents. When I talk to them coming over to EXP, they're like, well, I really like being around my, 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 my office mates. And I said that's an important thing. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll say it all, honestly. I mean, being in your house a lot, you get kind of locked into your house, and you get locked, and you're like, okay, this is where I work, and, you, and your home and your office environment kind of blend. It's hard to decide where those lines really are dividing. Um, and that's where right now, since we're in the beginning, we're like you said, Adam, we're figuring this out. We're, we're, we're babes in the business again. But in a digital version of it, we'll figure it out. And I think Keller Williams, you guys have the infrastructure to have the digital brokerage plus have the clubhouse, like you said, so that people can go in, see all their pals, but yet they don't have to spend all their time there. And it's yeah, where we ever land on this thing, it's going to be, shoot, you know what, maybe EXP and KW, maybe they'll independently create you know, all this, you know, this you know, retail that we're talking about that's going by the wayside because of Amazon, maybe we'll suck some of that retail up at a lower you know, cost per square foot, turn those into clubhouses where people can come in and co-mingle and relax and hang out with each other, not have to go to mixed work use centers, but make them, you know, not offices, but clubhouses, you know, something along those lines yeah. where people can hang out. Yeah. I don't yeah, one one hundred percent agree. You, you know, you said earlier you talked about like the, um, you know, creating that kind of ecosystem that's there. You know, if you think about that back in the Andersol days, and, and then going forward, so we're going back yeah. a, a while. Um, that's really what they created, wasn't it? It was like those small communities, and then we kind of. It's like Matt, you shared the book with me, Unscale. I'm thinking about it in this concept the entire time we're having this conversation. It's like it was it was small centers and then they went globally and now all of a sudden we've kind of realized like well we've saturated global. It was almost like we scaled to the possibilities and people got remote. Now we're scaling back to these small ecosystems. Think about even development organizations. I think about the companies and the 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 like these, these development centers that I'm building, they're Alzheimer's care facilities, they're nursing homes, they're independent living, there's freedom living, there mm-hmm. is a uh, commercial space for a massage therapist, a dentist, there's a grocery store that's there, there's a Whole Foods there, and yeah. everyone doesn't have to walk or leave, but then they can if they want to, right? They have mm-hmm. the opportunity, but everybody, everything is there um, for it. It's like we're coming back to building those communities again um, from the from original thing. It's actually just really fascinating from a world oh, perspective. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think people, it's interesting because there's so there's so many factors of where it could go. AI is, is in the infancy. AR is in the infancy. VR is in the infancy. Mm-hmm. Like all these technologies, you never quite know what's going to hit because the technology is growing, but then you've got the consumer going, I want something useful. Give me something useful. In other words, we need like the killer app. So you never know like what time that killer app is going to hit for any of those technologies. We could all be sitting around showing houses in VR, or that could take another 15 years before that gets to the point where people feel comfortable doing that. You just never know what the consumer is going to jump on. And so, yeah, I think the the thing to do is we got to keep our eyes open and come together as an industry and uh, and always put the consumer first and just watch very closely what they latch onto and just be prepared to jump on that. And that's I think we've historically been bad at it. Hopefully, we'll be better at it. No, yeah, I, 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 I agree. Well, in my area here, we have a lot of uh, retirement communities. Uh, one's a really, really, really big one. It's called uh, Rossmore. And I always see these these older elderly folks. And now they want to get out and they want to go do stuff, but they're having to be bussed around. But now Amazon owns Whole Foods, so why wouldn't they want to take Whole Foods and the other entity that they buy and drop them into every single like large scale community so they can they can be its own own ecosystem? You know, what do people want? They want stuff convenient. So convenient is not having to get on a bus, ride the bus, get off the bus, shop, get back on, wait for the bus, get on the bus, ride the bus back, get off the bus, then unpack everything. That's not convenient. <laughs> walking down the street, going to Whole Foods, walking out, being scanned with your with your Google, with your Amazon account, and you don't, you don't again, at, since Adam is not a fan of pulling out money out of his wallet, it'll be perfect for you. <laughs> you can just walk right out of the store, and you're good to go. That's right. Yeah, uh, but but it is true though. I mean, it's all about convenience and what people are looking for, and that's and like we've said before, and we'll say it again, we don't ask the consumers; we tell the consumers what they want. And the consumers go, "What the hell are you talking about? I don't like that, but you're making me have that, so I'm gonna have that." Okay, I don't like it still. Oh crap, that's reality. All right, here we go. Yeah, I know. You know, you know, a company that's done a really good job of shifting is Walmart. Hmm. Um, if you know, they if you think I talk about a company that had it was infrastructure heavy, very traditional. They have done a really good job of shifting to, you know, ordering their groceries online. I mean, they've done a really yeah. good job to stay up and change. People, I don't think people really recognize it because they're like, oh, Walmart, Walmart. But they, they were on the 
they had to make and they went significant into a whole different arena, which is now all of a sudden they're becoming much more profitable again. And it's just really cool to see that industries can shift. They just got to be in the forefront of doing it. Well, Sam Walton, I mean, back when he was starting Walmart, he I don't know if you guys know this story, but he was in South America visiting some friends, right? He was so obsessed about Walmart and making it perfect for the consumers. He actually got arrested by uh, by a by a city police because what he was doing, he was on the ground measuring the width of every aisle that they were having down in the South American, you know, supermarkets. I mean, they had to kindly, you know, ask the, the authorities to let the billionaire go because he was just measuring things. <laughs> but the, that's the obsession that, you know, he had with it. And we all laugh about, like you said, laugh about Walmart. But I got to tell you, I bought some jeans there last year when I had to because American Airlines lost my luggage. Do I still have those jeans? They're freaking awesome, and they're only thirty-five bucks. So they're, they're awesome. I mean, yeah. and American <laughs> Airlines didn't really lose your luggage. You just went in there to buy them, Greg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You saw right through me. Damn it. Yeah. I know. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> mock you mercilessly, but you, Greg, you will never live that down. <laughs> Ever. I love it. All right, Adam. How do people reach out and connect and kind of stay up with what you're what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, um, you can go to adamherglife.com, but herglifeblog.com, um, that's where I'm getting a lot of – every week I, I, I get a blog out there uh, for everything that's going on in the industry, just kind of thoughts, shifts. Um, love for you guys to get in there and comment. Again, I'm not, I don't think mm-hmm. everyone needs to agree with me, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on what, what we're doing and where we're wrong and, and change, help change my thinking. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, love it. Herglifeblog.com. Yeah, but any, any, there's no way thought, no thought changing. Right? You're on the right path. I mean, you're, you, you, your, your vision is, is accurate. Unless there's an atomic bomb that's dropped on us, knock on wood, it doesn't happen. But, I mean, when it comes to the business-wise, like if something radically shifts and we go backwards in technology, I don't think that's going to happen. But otherwise, I only see us progressing, you know, down the road with, with, with the way we're, we, we've been talking on the show. I mean, like we said before, when I went to Russia and got my first, air quotes, Uber, which wasn't an Uber, you know, Russia was ahead of, you know, Uber by years. Yeah. I can't remember the name of what they called it, but it was pretty scary to get in some guy Russian guy's car who doesn't speak English chain-smoking cigarettes as he's zigging zagging through traffic. But thank God they, they awesome. centralized that. But, that. but that's where we are in this business. We're, we're in the Russian's car. Yeah. They're chain-smoking, zigzagging through traffic, having no idea how we're going to get there, but we're going to get there safely. Then someone's going to come by and centralize it. Well, and that's, yeah, I was going to say, that's a good lesson to learn, which is the next round of innovation probably looks terrible at first glance. It always yeah. does. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I, I guarantee yeah, you the, last- the people that were driving buggies in the early 1900s, the late 1800s, they're they're like everything's mahogany. It's woods hand carved. They're looking they're looking at the like electric bicycles and tricycles. They're like, what the hell is that contraption? I wouldn't what touch is that. that? That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's so true. I love it. Uh, I love oh it. my god, that you is know, a good I would, I, one, one one comment I would just make um, as we as we um, you know at some point we'll have to wrap up here, but uh, the uh, don't wish this time to go by faster. You know, I'm hearing people mm. like, oh, let's just get through this, get through this. You don't know what's going to happen in your life in three years. Somebody could be dead. Somebody could be married. Some of these things, all these wonderful events are going to happen in your life over, this, over the next one, two, three years in your life. Don't wish ahead of this. Enjoy this journey that you're on right now. Embrace the change so that you can suck in all of this energy, all of this chaos, all of this cool things that are happening in our world so that you can then share the story about how you had an opportunity to help shift the real estate industry. Yeah. I Very love that. I, I love that mindset, man. I really do dig that because we always try to rush, 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 rush everything in life. And we just need to enjoy the process because what if you just stop rushing and you can have a significant impact? And I'm not talking like a little bit, like you he he helped out Betty buy a house. I mean, like you changed a business, you started a business, you did something significant that your kids and your grandkids could look yeah. back and be like, dude, Grandpa Greg really kicked butt back then. You know, because he didn't, because he didn't run around you know, and just try to get through it. He just kind of dug down and saw the loopholes. And you know, his business partners Adam and Matt created Air Uber, and then we were able to fly around the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They invented that uh, that that hydraulic system that allows us to shoot people across the world in tubes. That's gonna Bam. Cool. Yeah. Man, it's awesome. Now, that would be cool. I would just do that just yeah. to be shot across the Atlantic with that. I, 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 I would yeah, gladly but... be at the uh, front end of that tube. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, how do people reach out and with you? Oh my God, that would be funny because I can actually see you sitting there waiting for me to crash. Um, <laughs> did that hurt? I looked like it hurt. Okay. <laughs> um, guys, go to bookmcdaniel.com. 
It's on your screen right now. Go to bookmcdaniel.com. Uh, book 30 minutes with me. Let's talk about EXP. Let's talk about you know digital brokerage. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about where this is going. If you guys have listened to this whole show, you'll know that the three of us have a passion for it. We definitely feel that it's coming this way. If you guys want to pull your hand head out of the sand and just look around, I'm not saying you've got to jump. I'm just saying look. Book 30 minutes with me. Let's see what it looks like. That's how they get a hold of me, Matt. How about you? Uh, bookjohnson.com. So if you want to talk about uh, marketing, team building, business systems, that sort of thing, if you need some advice, especially if you've seen a lot of the coaches or vendors and providers and stuff like that that we've had on the show and you need some advice on just what the next step is, just go to bookjohnson.com. Uh, don't, don't, the... don't, don't you have a secondary booking link? Uh, no, no, uh, we do not. <laughs> okay. I, I will not dignify that with a response. Um, for the show itself, go to reuncensored.com. All the links out from there. Uh, or on the website, you can go straight to iTunes or Apple Podcasts and subscribe. Uh, make sure to leave a rating and a review. So if you enjoyed Adam's episode especially, you go leave us a rating on iTunes. Make sure to call out Adam specifically. Thank him for his time. Dude, I know, Adam, you are super busy, so we are pumped uh, that we are even able to get you on the schedule, which is awesome. Yeah. So we'll honor your time. Uh, and everybody go check out hergliflog.com. Gotcha. Yep. H-E-R-G as in Hergenrother. Yeah. Perfect, man. Yep. Awesome, guys. Um, Greg, shall we put a nice uh, bow upon this episode? We shall. Matt, pick your color quickly because we got time. Oh. We're running. Has to be dark red. Dark red. Dark red bow. Guys, thank you for this. Adam, legitimately thank you. This has been one of my hands-down yeah. hand favorite conversations we've had in the last three and a half, almost four years of doing the podcast. Love your energy. I love your knowledge. I love where you're going. I love what you're doing. Love, if down the road, if we can squeeze us in, we'll get we'll book you down six years in advance because we know you're booked that far. Uh, but we'll get you back on the show. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys. This is what we're this is what we're talking about. This is what Matt and I've been building. This is what the show is about: is bringing people like Adam to you guys, so you can get fresh perspectives, not the old you know fuddy duddies you know that that are in your office, but get real forward thinkers. that are gonna bring real knowledge to you. So share the show, guys. Matt and I love you to pieces. We're gonna continue doing the show. Um, and we're, we just love you to pieces. So with that, guys, until next time, peace out, ninjas. We are gone.